Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean Belegian. What do you want me to say? I, I, let's everybody just take a moment to collect yourselves. You cool? You all right? What a bummer, huh? What a bummer. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Uh, unfortunately, RW something that we've been talking about, you know, on social media, something that we've been talking about. Blake and I, something that Mike and I and what the puck we're talking about, RW indeed turned out to be uh, the culprit. Uh, good news is the Red Wings win. Bad news is the Capitals win. Good evening. I'm glad you could join us. Sorry it's under these circumstances, you know, but uh, a, a chance for you to vent, a chance for us to talk about the Red Wings season, a chance for Blake to swear it will because – you know, unlike his day job, by the way, he's at WJR, the Mitch Album Show, and with Sports Rap. If he swore there he could lose his job, he could go off like a sailor right now if that's something he chose to do. I love hearing in the background just your dogs playing with chew toys. He's going nuts. He's, I he's hear that. Yeah, he's going nuts. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a real kick in the dick, Sean. And I can say that on here, as you just said. It was a real kick in the dick. All right, so I, I want to – so many reactions from you guys. I, I don't want to get on, on the soapbox just yet. I don't want Blake to get on the soapbox yet. I said we wanted to be a place where you guys could react tonight, and certainly that's where you guys are. Uh, my Aunt Maureen said I'm too busy crying. Eric said let me be the first to say it, fire Lalonde. We're going to talk about that, I, I promise you. Uh, Andrew said, wings should be in uh, bullshit tiebreaker rule. That's the rule, man. Everybody knows it. It's been that way. If you don't win enough games in regulation, you, you're not going to make the playoffs. Really. I mean, that's the rule. It, it, uh, what else? What other tiebreaker could you make? You, you know what I mean? That, uh, that's I just... been in place for a while. Um I'm sorry if you've been listening to me. I've been I've been banging the drum on that for weeks now. That the one thing that could work against the Red Wings, just in case of a tie, is their RW was lacking, and that's exactly what happened. Mike from Wealth Advantage Group said, "Had man uh, to be crucified." Uh, Brett said, uh, "Do you think people will complain about not making a move to pick up someone at the trade deadline? Every everything's open right now." I mean that that's that's what you do. That's what people are reacting about. I get it. You get you know, bitch away tonight. Seriously, bitch away tonight. I, I'm I'm being dead serious when I say that. Uh, Flyers had to win in regulation to keep their hopes alive. There was no doubt about it that the Philadelphia Flyers were going to pull their goaltender late in that game. If the game was tied, there was absolutely positively. No doubt about it that they were going to um they were going to pull their goaltender. Period. That was that was going to happen. That was going to happen. Uh Andrew said most wins should be the tiebreaker. Talk about that next year. Yeah. I, seriously, Andrew, I have zero time for that talk right now. Everybody knew what the rule was. I didn't hear you or anybody else complain in the last five years about that rule. If you don't like it now, you can say, well, maybe the NHL should rethink that. But I mean, that was the rule. It's been the rule for a while. That's just the way it is. And that's why people like me have been saying for the past few weeks, I'm Blake, I'm serious. I I'm going to sound like a douche, but I'm going to say it. nobody was talking about that. Nobody was talking about that. And, and I, I'm going, guys, it, it's staring you right in the face. God forbid the Red Wings find themselves in a position where they're tied. 
the RW could really hurt them. I mean, just looking at the standings, Pittsburgh had more RW. Washington had more RW. Um, you, you know, the Islanders had more RW. Um, Philly had more RW. That That's huge. Just in case there was a tie, that would have been a huge factor. And little did I know a few weeks ago, that's exactly what happened. So, like, Andrew, no disrespect to you. I, I get it. If, if that's something that you think in the future – Maybe the NHL should talk about that. Oh, okay, that's fine. But I, I can't hear that right now because that's been in place for a while, right? Yeah. Take care of your business in the regulation, and we're not having this conversation, you know? Also, what I, I, I've i been just thinking about what Ted said here, the losses to Arizona. I know that those were a couple of weeks ago, but you you lost twice to a really, really bad Arizona Coyotes team. Yeah. And like Andrew said – Andrew said, I didn't know that was the tiebreaker. Else, I would have been bitching about it for years. Fair enough. Too <laughs> that, that's, that, that's why, it, like, honestly, I, Doug Todd, nice to see the inspector in there, said 3 9 and 2 in March. I mean, that, that, that says it all. I mean, really, that, that says it all. Um, uh, Rich said the last two games gave me some hope. More on that in a second. Yes and no. But I'm going to ask you guys, I, I want your reaction. Okay. And, and and I'm going to tie this into the Lalonde stuff, and I'm going to let you guys decide. Okay, I'm ju- I'm just going to tell you what I saw, and Blake, you can agree or disagree, and and then, then you guys you guys can make a decision if if you want. You know, can can I ask you a question? You can ask me anything you want. I love that. Um, did you see? I heard them talking about it on the Wings broadcast. The goal that the Philly goal that was overturned. Yes, I, I didn't. I didn't understand that. What like Mike? Mike texted me immediately. I, I can't. I think I've said this to you before. I have a very difficult time juggling games. I think you and I have had yeah. this conversation before, especially if there's one game that I care about. If there are two games that that are of equal interest to me, I can do a good job juggling games. If there was one game that has much more interest to me. I don't even pretend like, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even pretend. So uh, that's, that's the way it goes. My problem oh. is, is because Bally's is such a mess. I can't watch it in my man cave because I don't have it on the streaming device that I have. So I have to watch it in the living room where I only have one TV versus the three TV setup in the man cave. So By I could only way, watch one thing. Did you see our mutual friend uh, Jordan Young said, "Oh, was there a game tonight? I was watching the Leafs tank to get Boston." Yes, good. Uh, Jason said, "Also, don't go on a six-game skid." Just saying um, that seven-in-a-row loss should never happen. Ray said, "If you're Detroit, do you back up the Brinks truck for Reinhardt?" All right, so let me ask you guys this. Here's the question that sits in my mind. So four games against Montreal this year, all of them go into overtime, all right? The last two nights, and I was at that game last night. It was unbelievable. I mean, really, I mean, just great atmosphere, fun time. Thanks to my buddy, Joe Neville. He he brought, uh, you know, Mike and I, and we we had a great time there, okay? And I'm being serious. And if you guys want to call me out, you go right ahead and call me out. There were times the last two nights where I found myself wondering aloud which team was fighting for their playoff existence and which team was playing out the string. That's a little disconcerting to me. Would you agree with that, Blake? Would all of you agree with that? That that's a little, and, and, not here or there either. Does that make sense? There are ebbs and flows when you're talking about a 60 minute hockey game. Okay. The one thing that you have to give Martin St. Louis credit for is he's got that team going. He's mm-hmm. got them going. And, and Blake, that was a little disconcerting for me the last couple of nights. I, and, and I'm going to ask all of you out there, and Blake, I'm going to let you start it out. Did, did you notice that as well? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like uh, the first half of the third period, I was I had the thought, which team is fighting for their playoff life right now? Yeah. Because I, I got the same exact vibe. I was like, just something seems off and it seems like especially the last couple games like you said they're like waiting to make a comeback 
like they're not going for the burial early on. I don't know. It, I agree a hundred percent. It was just a weird vibe, but also at the same time, I was like, I know they're going to come back and tie this up. I, it was just, they've done it so many times. So it was a weird feeling. Okay. Hold that thought for just a second. I want to get some reactions. Andrew said, Montreal played hard. Nick said, yes, I thought the same thing. Sean rich Montreal is a fast team. Boy, are they ever, um, Derek said, I agree, Sean. Okay, for an agreement, that's something to worry about. Period. And I want to make my feelings on this crystal clear. I am not in the fire Lalonde camp. I'm not. I don't think that two years under the circumstances in which he took over is enough time. I don't. Now, let me also say, I don't know what is going on inside the room. I can only talk from a on the outside looking in stuff. I don't know if there are extracurricular activities, okay? But I think both things can be true. That is, no pun intended, a red flag. And that is something to keep an eye on as we move into year three with Coach Lalonde. That, that's, that's the way I feel right now. And to David's point, Montreal is going to be good, good sooner rather than later. Um, here's another thing I've been saying for a couple of years. The Atlantic division is going to do a flip real soon. Mark my words. Remember I said this. What date is it? April 16th? Yes. Remember this date. Okay. I'm not saying next year, maybe two years from now. Do not be surprised if you don't see Detroit and Montreal at the top of this division. Don't be surprised at all. I mean, there there is a ton of youth with both teams right now. And the good news is a lot of that youth is is guys that you haven't even seen yet. You know what I mean? So I think that's going to be very, very uh, interesting to see uh, moving up. Um, Jason said, Lalonde is back, but I would love Jerry Gallant. Here's the thing about Steve Eiserman, Okay. And all we can do is look at his history in hiring coaches. It might be coincidence, but I'm a guy that gets geeky about things like this. He always hires a first-timer. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It was Guy Boucher. It was John Cooper. It was Coach Lalonde. So far, he's hired a first-timer. He hasn't made that move to bring in a Barube or a Gallant or, or, or a guy that had, you know, experience elsewhere. He, he got that first time guy. Guy Boucher was the hot name. It never really happened for him. Um, you know, as, as you remember, John Cooper, I mean, what more needs to be said? Uh, Lalone came on a personal recommendation. So, just as something to consider, that doesn't mean that that precludes a Gallant or a Barube or, you know, pull out any other retread. And I don't say that disrespectfully. Um, that doesn't mean that it precludes any of them. But with that being said, Blake, I think that's something to consider. Yeah. No, I mean, it's. I don't know, man. I was like, so I this is the first time in so long I've been like mentally invested in the wings and i'm just like i i was so excited now it's all gone (laughs) how would you categorize this season if i and and i'm gonna again i hate to make you the guinea pig no it's that's why i'm here okay and and to everybody that's watching right now and thank you thank you thank you so much for watching us and please please i'm going to talk about some of our sponsors if you like the crap that we're doing and we're having a lot of fun please support our sponsors it would mean the world to all of us me personally seriously it would these guys like believe in us and that's pretty stinking cool so if you could support them i'd appreciate it so if you like this crap answer me this question how would you categorize 2023 Detroit Red Wings, the 2023 2024 Detroit Red Wings. You're on the clock first, sir. Um, I would say it's a success. Honestly, I mean, as much as it like hurts right now, I think it's a success because you put yourself in a position to be in a playoff hunt and play important games down the stretch. And did it go our way? No, but 
you still put yourself in a position to try and make the playoffs. And there was a stretch there where I did not think that there was even a chance. So, yeah, no, I get it. Uh, lots of people have commented. Uh, in, in fact, we have some hockey royalty in there. I, he, he, I can see him blushing right now. Uh, Genghis said successful season. Michael said, thank you for doing the podcast. A great time in Detroit sports for the podcast. Thank you. Uh, hockey royalty, Mark Buffet. What's up both. Well, that was fun. Go Griffins. Uh, David said one year ahead of schedule where everyone thought we would be bright future. Uh, Mike from wealth advantage said lions two years ago, wings this year, missed the playoffs by an inch. David, if we are not, a middle of the pack team in mid January next year, then consider coach Lalone on the chopping block. Rich said exceeded my expectations. Ben, of course, the, the voice of our friends with the motor city rockers, a success because they had to do what they to do with the horses. They had Iserman didn't make a move at the deadline for a reason. Uh, Ray said missed opportunity, too many bad losses. Brett said good season to build on. You played playoff hockey for a while. Uh, Tim said, is their record better than last year? If so, yes. Justin said, exceeded my expectations, already looking forward to next year. TJ said they are the 2023 Lions next year. They'll make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, look at Todd. Todd Todd jumping in. Feels like they're waiting their turn both as a team and individually. Want someone to carpe diem and put this team on their shoulders and play above their years. Uh, Sean said they were up nine points for the wild card in February and choked. What are you people talking about? That he, felt personal. He's got a point. I, can, can, can I go back to the losing streak? Can I go back to three, nine and two? But you have to look at the season as a whole. Okay. You have to look at, I, I it, part of it is that though. Uh, John said, I have fe- faith in Steve Eiserman. So do I. I'll say it time and time again. So do I. I think what people constantly forget about the circumstances that he took over here. And I saw some silly little, what do you kids call it? Meme? Meme? Yeah. Going around today where they showed Steve Eiserman's face and and, and it it said Steve Eiserman takes over uh, Tampa five years later. Steve Eiserman takes over Detroit five years later. And, you know, and showed the, the, the gap between the two teams. I cannot stress this enough. And if I sound like a broken record, so be it. Because there, you cannot compare what he took over in Tampa to what he took over in Detroit in any way, shape, or form. You can wonder aloud why it hasn't happened as quickly here in Detroit as you thought. But there is, I cannot stress this enough. Zero, zero comparison. That's good camera work between I mean, what what he took over in Tampa and what he took over in Detroit. Zero. Let me give you. I'm going to give you an example, and I'm not even going to use the guys' names in Tampa anymore because I know so many of you are sick and flipping tired of hearing it. Okay, so I'm not going to bring up Hedman and Stamkos. Let me instead do this. Can you imagine if Steve Eiserman took over the Detroit Red Wings on April 19th, 2019, and he already had Lucas Raymond and Mo Sider in house? Can you imagine how different this would be? And I don't want anybody to misconstrue. I am not saying that Mo Sider is going to be Victor Hedman. I am not saying that Lucas Raymond is going to be Steven Stamkos. I'm not saying that. But do you, like Blake... He didn't have anything. No, no the cabinet was empty. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Jason said, pretty sure I remember Stevie said uh, his goal is to build a championship contending team, not just a playoff team. He also said it wasn't going to be a complete rebuild. It was going to be a complete rebuild. Does it suck? Yep. Do I see good things going forward? Yep. I'm sorry. If you guys have listened to me on the radio, in, in the two different shows that I've did, did since Steve Eiserman took over, if you've watched me on TV, if you've watched me on this podcast, I have not changed my tune one time. The clock doesn't even start, in my mind, until after this draft. 
I said that day one. Blake, I said it when you and McCarty and I were doing shows three years ago. The yep. clock doesn't even start until after the 2024 draft. That There's a reason why it's called a five-year plan. That's five years. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's, when we're, that's when we're, it's amazing how that works out, isn't it? So that's when we're going to be able to start to sit back and, and go, okay, what do we have here? And how close are we to getting to that point? Now, that's do I think that the wings are close to that point yet, Blake? No, I don't. I, I, I don't think, I don't think, you know, this time next year, we're going to be sitting there going, damn, the Red Wings are a real legitimate shot to win the Stanley Cup. I, I don't think that'll be the case, but we'll find out. I, I'm, I'm. I'm struggling internally with before the season, I didn't really have super high expectations. You go into a season just hoping for them to play well and kind of get to the spot that they ended up in, you know, competing for a playoff spot. But also like when they went on that winning streak, expectations seems to change for me even. And I expected more. And now I'm back to my expectations where they were before the season. So it's like, it's just weird. There's disappointment, but there's also hope and excitement. So it's just, it's a weird spot, man. Uh, Sean said, say fuck. Uh, you said it. Slight failure. You need to make the playoffs when you had that cushion. Uh, Tim said 80 points last year, 81 this year. Success. Uh, too many second and third line guys need a superstar scorer. Eric wasn't to want, it supposed to be that guy. I, I want, I want exceptional. I don't like the way they used to bring it. I'll be the first guy to say it. I don't, I don't like the way they used to bring it at all. He needs a facilitator. I'm just saying that was supposed to be that yes. he needs a facilitator and, and he didn't have a facilitator for a long stretch and didn't make sense to me. Um, let me, I, there was scroll. I want to scroll up a second. There were a few comments that, uh, I, I, I forgot to hit. Uh, Ryan said, how about the lions? The lions ended hot after a bad start. The wings blew their opportunity. Um, let's see. What did, what did Ray say? Uh, Sean Stamkos is a free agent. How would you and wings fans feel if they were to go get him? Stevie, you Stevie using his influence on him. What's the price? You know that, that I mean, to me, that's the, what, what, What's the price? It would I, I think would be a first, a good first question. Um, Tony, any thoughts on what they'll do about the goaltending situation? I think that's a very interesting question. What Raymond says goes hand in hand with that. Detroit won't go anywhere without a true number one goaltending. Tampa has Vasilevsky. Could the AHL goalie Casa maybe be be the guy? Um, Blake, I think you and I have talked about this. I know Mike and I have talked about this. Uh, here I go using Tampa as an example. Ben Bishop was a damn good bridge. Ben Bishop took them all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, he didn't finish it, but if you remember, Ben Bishop was a pretty damn good bridge to get them to the point where Vasilevsky was ready. And when Vasilevsky was ready, it did not take him long to yank the crown of best goaltender in the NHL. It did not take him long at all. Um, The Red Wings, I think are not close to that point. I still think, and this is one man's opinion, I still think that they are looking at Trey Augustine as the goaltender of the future. Just one man's thoughts. I I think that's the guy that they're looking at right now, Blake. I really do. Um, Darren said this team needs a real goalie, real D-man or two. My buddy John Watson from State Champs disappointed the Wings missed the playoffs, but this year's team had too many holes, need to find a, a few more key players. Uh, Jim said wings still need a number one center uh, boy, Jim, you know, a lot of people are going to scream at you about that. You know, you know how that works. It, it's, it's like, I'm sorry. It's the, un- I really like Dylan Larkin. I do. Is he a number one center? Well, compare him to the rest of the guys that call themselves number one centers in the league. You guys do that. Tell me, seriously, go look up the one centers in the league right now. And then you get back to me and, and you let me know. I'm serious. Um, Brett said, Iserman is being judged like Jim Harbaugh was at Michigan. They expect everything in two years. I, I, Brett, I think that a lot of people in particular, the last couple of years are victims of their own expectations. Blake, I don't, I didn't know you back then. 
So I'm going to ask you to Brett's point. There were people in year one of Jim Harbaugh that were saying, well, he's going to win the big 10 in year one. Natty in year two or year three. Right. I mean, I, I remember hearing people just going, good gosh, man. Um, and I think that was wishful thinking because it was a world turned upside down situation. As we all know, they were, you know, not only getting beaten handily by their in-state rival, but they were being beaten constantly by their biggest rival. Uh, young Blake, were, were you like that around 15, 16? Were you, were you like, yes, Michigan's going to win it all. And, and all no, that. I was really dumb back then. I mean, I still, I'm really dumb now, but no, I was not that guy. Because I, I just the it's the same thing we're talking about with the wings. The cupboard was bare. They needed a lot. Uh, fans are stubborn to win now. They don't have patience to let things grow within. Uh, they want one season flip to win it. But if there's nothing to work with, then a rebuild is needed. So, like Roger said, relax, uh, Doug. Uh, we've been banging this drum for weeks on what the puck and. In particular, defense is a big issue with this roster. Need 50% turnover on that back end. Uh, Petrie, Ollie, Sherratt, Hull all need to go. It's huge. Um, defensively, and, and again, this is where I ask you to look at the season as a whole. I know that a lot of people have crapped on Alex Lyon uh, the past couple months. A couple months ago, he was the Red Wings MVP. He really was. Yeah, well, and, and I think it's unfortunate for him. You were asking him to be something that he is not. He can do it for stretches. He proved that in Florida last year. But he isn't like the number one workhorse. You know what I mean? And, and I think the fact that he was playing so well with the liabilities in front of him in his own zone really speaks to how there was a period of time in this season where he really carried them. I mean, he really, truly did. And I know he's been a whipping boy for a while, and I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I think they put him in a position that he probably shouldn't have been in to begin with. If that makes sense. You know, that makes boy. sense. All right. Um, you're making a lot of sense tonight. It's almost like I like hockey or something. Yeah, you know some things. Almost I'm getting a beautiful education this evening. Like um, Raymond said maybe Detroit should use Vegas motto, sign big names, put them on the L till the playoffs. Uh, my aunt Maureen said they played their hearts out in spite of knowing they were out. Jim said the truth hurts. Uh, Tim said, no, like the lions defense, defense, defense. Uh, Ryan said, <laughs> how many goaltenders of the future do we have as many as catchers of the future? Wasn't that a great bit with the tigers for a while? Remember all the catchers of the future they got? Pick this guy up, pick that guy. Up. This is the catcher of the future. That's the catcher of the, the, the future. Uh, David said, Larkin, I got so much respect for that guy wants to win so bad and wants everyone to do well on the team. Uh, Blaine said, uh, Jim Blaine said, Larkin reminds me of Kadri would be great number two, questionable number one. I like Jim, I've had this discussion with people. With Blake being there on the radio, I've done it on Twitter. I'm tired of doing it, it because – like so many dumb arguments today in sports, it's almost like people have to take crap to the extremes, right? Well, why do you hate Larkin? Well, that's not true. Oh, well, why do you think Larkin is a superstar? That's not true either. You know, I think he's a damn good player. I take him on my team. I yes, 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 a thousand times yes. It's 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 weird. It's it's I don't know. It's a weird argument. You know, I, I don't, I don't really get it. Um, yeah, that's not you dogging the guy. That's just no, you wanting God. him to play in the correct role. Yeah. Jordan said Boston and Toronto. Gosh, is that great? You know who I'm rooting for in that series, Jordan? We know we all know what's going to happen though. And Jordan's not going to like it. Jordan knows what's going to happen deep down inside. Jordan knows what's going to happen. He can deny it all he wants, but he knows. May we've seen, we've seen this story before. May pull leaf. It, it just it happens, right? It happens. Um, 
It, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But yeah, obviously, right now, I think we're all licking our wounds. Um, it's not a bad team. There's a lot to look forward to. I think nobody wants to hear this right now, but I'm going to be the guy to say it. Okay. Would you rather make the playoffs? Of course. Of course you would. Do you really want to go in the playoffs and be out like that to a team like the Rangers? In the grand scheme of things, does that really help the franchise? And I'm asking honestly. Of course you'd rather make the playoffs. I get it 100%. And suddenly the Red Wings have the second longest spell of not making the playoffs. Sabres are number one. Red Wings are number two now. That's crazy. I know, right? That's wild. Um, was, but can I push back on that? Yes, of course you can. I'd rather make the playoffs. Okay. 100%. It's just, okay. it, I, I, it's, it's the same thing we talked about with like the Lions or from Michigan a few years ago. Like, I want to be there. Doesn't matter if I, if I know I'm going to get smoked. Going into that Michigan Georgia game, I knew I was getting smoked. It didn't matter. I got there. I get it. Like that's an accomplishment. I, I get it. I all get on it. its own. So that's the only thing I would have rather, you know, and have fun and and as a dumb sports fan, say, hey, we got a chance. Chip in a chair. Come on. Rockers in the playoffs. Uh, our buddy Gordy Brown, of course, coach of the year in the league. Got to give him some love. He said, Augustine before uh, Sebastian, they both need reps in the NHL, and that takes time. No question. No question about it. And and I think the reason why I brought that up is I'm trying to draw the parallel to what you saw in Tampa. Ben Bishop was a wonderful bridge to get to the guy, and the guy was Andre Vasilevsky. Um, could Kosa be a bridge to get to Augustine? Because you're guys, these aren't guys that are coming in next year and, and are going to pull a, a Patrick Waugh or a Cam Ward for you. They aren't. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Neither one of these guys are going to come in and, and lead you all the way to the Stanley cup and, and win a con Smythe trophy at age 20. It's, you know, it's not, it's not going to happen. Okay. It takes time. Couldn't agree more with Gordy. Also, uh, real quick before you go to another comment, yeah, Coach Gordy's profile picture on YouTube is—he is very handsome in it. I got yeah. distracted by that. He's a very Sorry, man, isn't he? He's a very handsome man. Jason says, Sean, every time you mention the Tigers, I have flashbacks to the Brandon Inge days and uh, that one show. I was a monkey. Oh my goodness, the the the, the excuse people made for Brandon Inge. Uh, David said he's a good player and a good captain. We just need more firepower around him. Couldn't agree with you more. And somehow people, David, it's weird. People take that as, why do you hate Dylan Larkin? Goodness gracious, man. Stop it. See, Doug, you know why I like Doug Todd? You know why Doug Todd's my friend? Because years ago, Blake, I used to say, I, I like to speak in fact. Okay? I do. I'm a big fan of speaking in fact. And to speak, in fact, you have to do some research. You don't have to just throw shit against the wall. You have to you have to do a little research. Doug Todd said Larkin finished 16th in the league among centers in points per game. There was an article a couple weeks ago in The Athletic. And I don't know how many of you guys read The Athletic. I think The Athletic's good. Okay, good. There's some stuff that... But anyway... I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, but there was an article <laughs> in in The Athletic. I don't, I don't know how many of you guys saw it, but it was pertaining to number one centers in the National Hockey League. And an unnamed general manager said, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact quote, I really like that Larkin kid. But if that's your number one center, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage against a whole heck of a lot of teams in the National Hockey League. I didn't say that. That's an unnamed general manager. Now, did I say that before? Yeah, I did. I, 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 sorry. And, and it, it's, it's like I said, it's so weird. It's, it, 
somehow people take that as like a slight. He he's a heck of a player. I want him. It's fine, but it's the know. same. This is the same thing we talked about with Goff the other day. We can be critical of a player or of a team and and there shouldn't be any issue with that. You're you're being critical of Larkin and his role on the team that doesn't mean you think he's a bad player whatsoever. No, absolutely not. Uh, John said yes, make the playoffs more experience for Raymond, Larkin, etc. It all helps. Oh, you, uh, you skip over the one that says uh, yep, agree with Blake though. Oh, sorry. Yep, agree Blake. Yeah. Get those Thank types you. of playoff atmosphere experience there. Um, I'm really smart. Uh, Gordy, thanks, Blake. I'll get you some playoff tickets. We want to go see the Rockers. Damn it. I, I told you. They, like, we have to We have to go figure that out. You know? It's right by my house. It's, it's outstanding. You'll have to come to my side of the town over here. Narnia. I'll, I'll be at Big Boy Arena a couple times in the next couple of weeks. Looking forward to it. Of course, we got the alumni game coming up the 27th. Eric with an A said... When I look back at this year, I see one glaring issue that Iserman will likely address in the offseason, and that involves upgrading our team defense. We talked about that a few minutes ago and couldn't agree with you more, Eric, with an A. Limiting shots on net will help our goaltending situation. Yes, making the playoffs this year can only help the learning curve towards being a cup contender. Um, Todd said, but that reset research shows we are barely moving, makes moves, find talent. Uh, Scott said, unfortunate end for the wings. Yeah, it is. No doubt. It is. I- I'll tell you what, I- I'm not, I'm not joking. Last night at LCA was as electric of a game I've been to in a long, long time in any sport. It w- like Blake, it was electric down there. It really was. It was That's really, awesome. really cool. Brett said, what is the early take on Kane next year? Does he stay in Detroit or not? Okay. This is where we'll find out if Patrick Kane's intentions were true. There's an opportunity to, for him to be here. I think there's a place for him. I think he proved to everybody he can still go. Although, am I alone in thinking the last couple of weeks he looked a little tired? Yeah. Did anybody no, else? I think that? he's gone. Did anybody really else? do. He had moments of Patrick Kane, but I, I I thought in the last couple of weeks he looked a little more tired. Just just I know I wasn't alone in that. I was talking to I have a feeling Mike and I will be talking about that tomorrow. Um, you have to remember I, I say it all the time. I think there's shape and then there's game shape. These guys keep themselves in tip top condition all the time. But when you're coming back, especially from an injury like that. You can do all the rehab you want. You can do all the elliptical you want. You can do all the off-ice training you want. You can do all the on-ice training you want. But at the end of the day, if you aren't in game shape, there's a big difference. There just is. And I I think he he looked like he was full of energy, and I didn't see as much energy the last couple weeks. Just one man's opinion. One man's opinion. Well, I know it wasn't one man opinion, Brett. I'm going to say to answer your question, I'm going to say yes, he's back next year. I'm going to say yes, he's back next year. You don't, like, more you don't think so? You don't think no, so? I think he's gone. Okay. I, that interview he did, what was it last week, where he's where he was like, I loved my time in Detroit. That was just it was bad vibes. Okay. All right. Hey, will you uh, will you make it so Todd stops yelling at us? Yeah, that you know what I I want to tell you right now, as a matter of fact, about our friends from Legacy. And you know, I was bringing this up earlier. Thank you so much for watching us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Part of the reason we're able to do this is because of great folks like my pals at Legacy. So, could you do me a favor? And in turn, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Give my friends at Legacy Partners, give my friends at Legacy Partners a call. You're not only doing me a favor, but you're going to be doing yourself a favor because I promise you that Joe or Alex or Dave will save you money. So while you're doing me a favor, in essence, you're doing yourself a favor. 
Now, why? Because thousands of Metro Detroiters have already done just that. They've called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance. These guys know what they're doing. They're one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, whether it be personal, business, large, or small. Do you got your pen? Write that number down, Fruitcake, 586 209-4106. That's 586-209-4106. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get you the right coverage put in place, and most importantly, saving you money. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're paying too much, you could be underinsured. Enter Legacy Partners. Give them the shot. What are you waiting for? Just call, get your quote, say, hey, I watched that idiot Belegian. He was talking you guys up. They're going to take care of you like they have for thousands of people out there. Your car, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, business insurance needs, 586-209-4106. That's 586-209-4106 or visit Legacy Partners, ins.com. Get yourself your quote. Do me a favor. Please, pretty please. And Blake, a favor. Blake, will you even do the please, please, pretty please? please? please. And you'll be doing yourself a favor at the same time. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And before Um, you continue, yes, for everyone out there watching, listening, if you're coming back, listening to the podcast that we've gotten all caught up on, everything, uh, please go uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you haven't heard me talk about it, we really want to grow our YouTube. It's youtube.com slash unsyndicated at unsyndicated pod. All that good stuff. L- subscribe to the page. Like some videos. We're even putting some short form content out there from from the podcast. So you can get us in little snippets. It's great. So go check all of our stuff out. We're really trying to grow and Make this thing as big as we possibly can, right, Sean? Absolutely. Yes, and and you know what, you guys are the absolute best. I'm I'm serious when I say that. Um, we're, I, look, I'm not joking. I have been totally reinvigorated in this crazy business that I've been in for about 29 years now. Doing this, um, I'm having fun. I love chatting with people. We're not taking ourselves too seriously, like so many people in the business do now. Uh, and, and I'm working with some great people. So that's pretty stinking cool. Uh, no doubt about that. As, as my buddy Ben said, always a chance to talk about our friends from the Motor City Rockers. Uh, Saturday, April 20th, uh, they are going to be at home. That is a 735 puck drop. Uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, Sunday at uh, Big Boy Arena, 505. I know I can't go Saturday. Believe it or not, Blake, Um my daughter's freshman year's coming in to an end. Congrats. Isn't that crazy? Dude, awesome. I dropped her off like three weeks ago. But I have to go up there and we have to move some stuff out and stuff like that. So, oh, look at my buddy Doug Podell. I can give a shout out to the Doc of Rock 1067. Legend. Absolute legend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as Ben just said, I'll, I'll repeat game two. Five o'clock, five oh five, I think to be precise, at uh, Big Boy Arena on uh, Sunday. Uh, Chris said uh, wings are heading in the right direction. Chris does a great job with his stuff. Uh, Rob said thanks for doing the show tonight. It's like a big comforting hug. Looking forward to the wings building on this progress next season. Chris, you're my guy. Yeah, dude. You know what? This is this is the type of stuff for me. This is the coolest stuff right? because. I'm just like you. I'm just a fan. I sit at home. A game like tonight, it was funny. Our buddy Joe Neville called me. He was like, who are you watching the game with? Nobody. Get out of here. I want to be by myself for a game of this magnitude, you know? Uh, Ray asked, will you be at the Memorial Cup this year? Yes. I I know I'm doing – I can't announce it yet. I know I'm doing at least two different things, but there might be a third thing as well. I'm sorry. I know that's, like, shady. But I I can't say. Oh, it's great! Is you're gonna announce it right here, one thousand on syndicated. So 1, everyone needs to keep tuning in, and they'll 1, find 000. out. Yep, this is this yeah. is this is the place where. We're, but um, yeah, I, Ray, 
I have a history in the OHL. I, I broadcast in the OHL for many, many years. So um, thankfully some people asked me if I would be a part of it and we're working on some things. How's that? Is that shady Blake or was that okay? How I did it? No, you're good. All right. Few guys uh, actually said, uh, agreed with me about Patrick Kane. He started running on empty. You could see it. You could see it. That energy, that jump that he had early on. I'm not taking anything away from his season. He proved beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's still a place in the league for Patrick Kane. Okay. There were a lot of people that wondered if he was shot. I mean, how many people said, Blake, you and I were on the air that day. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I don't understand the, dr the downside of this. If it mm -hmm. doesn't work, what, what did it cost you? It didn't cost you anything. What, what am I, what am I missing? And if he still has something left in the tank, he's going to help the team. And, and I don't know how any human being could say that Patrick Kane's impact on the team was anything less than positive. I don't know how one living, breathing organism could, could suggest otherwise now. All right. Um, what else? <laughs> Genghis said, uh, yeah, I miss these post therapies. Yeah, it's fun. This, like I said, this is, this is, uh, this is a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm glad that so many of you guys, Rob said, what can be done with Justin Hall? Um, I think he's one of the guys that when you transition, you rebuild your defense core. I, th I think the defense core should not have him as part of it. Sorry. Am I being mean? Am I being mean for, I don't, I don't think I'm saying you can that. be mean. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Andrew said, thanks for giving us the space to vent, Sean. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you, bro. You know that, uh, doc, doc, I never knew that doc. Seriously. I was the PA announcer for the Cleveland Lumberjacks. I had no idea, Doug. Seriously. That's pretty cool. No doubt about that. Um, yeah, so we'll see. It's a bummer, Blake. It, it's Don't get me wrong. I, I'll be okay when the playoffs start. You, you know how it is. We're going to have our little playoff barbecue, and yay, hooray. And I don't care what anybody said. The one thing about the NHL of today is the first round of the playoff is fantastic. Absolutely, positively fantastic. I love the first round of the playoffs. The first round of the playoffs when I was a kid in the 80s and into the early 90s was more often than not an absolute yawn fest. The top seeds almost always clobbered. Almost always clobbered the, the lower seeds. And in this NHL of today with... <clears throat> cost certainty, um, there is no guarantee in any way, shape, or form. Uh, let me tell you about our friends from Wealth Advantage, if I may for a second. I know Mike Husack, half of the Dream Team, was in there. And I'm going to say the exact same thing about these guys that we said about Legacy. Can't thank them enough for their support. And if you could do me a favor, call them. And in turn, you're going to be doing yourself a favor. Uh, because those two guys, the Hanson brothers, have been helping people for many, many years now. And if you're ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further than my friends, the Wealth Advantage Group, located in historic downtown Northville, owned by the Hanson brothers right there. With over 20 years of industry experience, they understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They do it for me. Seriously. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is a complex one. And if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, doing me a favor and in turn yourself a favor, it's time to work with a couple of experts. Reach out to the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or check out the website at www.thewealthadv.com. Uh, tell them that we sent you. I promise you they will take care of you. I Love promise, those guys. promise you. Promise you. Um, let me see. Uh, the Avs won't get out of the first round. Tragic. There's been a problem with them for a couple of weeks. And it's funny, Blake, I was watching games with Mike on Saturday, you know, when you blew us off and, um, I don't even, you blew you us off. You want to go there? You want to no, go there? That's okay. You play that game? 
Oh, my Mike and okay. I, Mike, I've been telling Mike for a while because, you know, Mike, Mike, usually he's the smart one. He goes to bed early and I've stayed up late and watched the abs. And I said, something's wrong. I told him a couple of weeks ago. I said, something's wrong in the last few weeks. It's something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but something's in the water there. Something's in the water. No doubt about it. Uh, Chris said, watch the Leafs be eliminated again. That's just. Jordan, set your watch, your ear. right? Plug your ears. Jordan. Set your watch to it, right? Jordan's mad at us right now. Uh, Doug said, what do we do about the Pistons? I say trade uh, Cade like we did Hill and find a closer. You you have to do something differently. The Doc, the, the good news about the Pistons is they were the hamster on a wheel for a long time. They, they were, you know, doing a lot of work, but they weren't going anywhere. So they tried the tank route, and the tank route hasn't worked. So now it's time to shake things up a little bit. and you have to think of things like that. You have to think, gosh, I hate using this term because it's a radio term. You have to think outside of the box. And because the way they've been conducting business has not, it's not working. So you, you have to make things like that. Um, what Are it, most it, of the matchups like set at this point? I know there's uh, a couple games tomorrow, but for the most part, everything's set, right? You know what? I haven't even looked since I was in a rushed hurry, Blake, to, um, to get on like the second that the game ended. And I, th I think we did a pretty good job of that. Didn't we pal? We were, we were on pretty shortly after the, the yeah. game ended, but um, we've got in, in we've got all the teams in the East, obviously. And we have uh, all the teams in the West. I, I think the only thing that is left is I think there's still a couple who is going to play like who seating. jockeying positions, things not, not, so much in the east. The east is well, pretty much set. Pretty much set. Well, the east is set. Yeah, as I look at it right now, the east. The east is set. Um, now the west is a little more up for grabs. So, yeah, is there we'll a matchup you're looking forward to? Like, if I, me, hockey, not hockey elite. If there's one series that I have to pay attention to and watch nightly. Which one is it? I love Boston, Toronto. I really, I, I truly do. I love, I love Boston, Toronto. I think that, I think that'll be fantastic. Um, it, do you, do you want a potential upset special? Uh, would anybody, would anybody's jaw drop if Tampa knocked off Florida again? Would anybody's jaw drop like two years ago when Florida was the shit, and um, you know Tampa kind of said, "Ho hum, here we come again." Um, and Florida's another team. Boy, they they haven't, they haven't been playing real well down the stretch. You know, who's they, Carolina got? Carolina has um, Islanders. Carolina has Islanders. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. I, hey, give like give Wa credit. Series, they were, you know, seriously. Give Wa credit. They were up. They were down. Uh, people thought they were out, and then the way they finished the season, they went like on an eight one and one terror. And I mean, they were there isn't a whole heck of a lot there, you know. There isn't they were a, like last year, last week they were a wild card team and then they ended up getting into the third slot, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think I think it I think it'll be fun. Uh Ted said Florida, Washington. I believe it's Tampa. I think it's Tampa and Florida. I think the Rangers get the one seed and then the Caps, because they have less points, would get that eight seed. If I'm not mistaken, that's how it works. So yeah, we'll probably see. some dumb tiebreaker that we don't know. No, because uh Washington has 91 points. Tampa has Tampa has 96 points. So Tampa would be then be the seven seed, which would mean they would play the two seed, which would be Florida. And then um Rangers would play. Yep. Tons and I know right. you're I know you're gassing up this format, mm -hmm. but just for my my dumb it. brain, I hate it. I want one through eight. That's what I grew up with. Okay, you you want me to you want me to now say what I grew up with? I miss divisional yeah. matchups. Okay, absolutely miss divisional matchups. I think it it builds rivalries. I I mean, okay, let's look at the Atlantic Division. So I was I was on with Jack Ebling, my buddy up in uh, East Lansing. Um, I did his TV show Sunday, and then I did his radio show. And this is a conversation. I'm going to use the exact same line to him that I did to you guys. I apologize for name dropping, but Chris Osgood and I were having a conversation 
And I, I said to Chris, it's a crying shame. You have Montreal and Detroit, all the great games they played this year, the bright future of both of these franchises, the historic past of both of these franchises, right? And these are two teams that have not played in the playoffs. It'll be 47 years next year. Yeah, that's a long time. There's something wrong with that, man. I'm sorry. There's something wrong with that. So could you imagine the Atlantic division having it like, you know, the the old Adams and Smythe and Norris and Patrick division? Could you imagine a one through four in the Atlantic division next year? Like how stinking cool would that be? You know, the the number one seed Panthers taking on the four seed Toronto. The number two seed Bruins taking on the three seed Detroit. Whatever the case may be. Oh my gosh. That you want to talk about rivalries. I mean, that was come on. It was it was glorious when when we were in that format. So I, I know I'm showing my age now, but okay, if you won't give me that, I'll take one versus eight, Blake. How's that? Yeah. That's just uh, that's what I grew up with. That's what I know. Yep. So yeah. Jason's uh, being mean to me in the chat. So there's that. Well, we're gonna watch Young Blood this summer, young man. You know what we could do? Could we do a we could could we do a like a live stream of Blake watching Young Blood? We Todd? can't let's talk we, Todd. Or, yeah, but we're not showing Young Blood as long we're as showing, we don't show it. Yeah. yeah, we're showing Blake's dumb face watching Young Blood. Yeah, I'll fall asleep, man. I don't like movies. I will annihilate you. I you don't will, like movies, Sean. Will, what do you want me to do? You will love Young Blood. I'm sure I would, but I don't like movies. I'm not a movie guy. Uh, Ray said, being Canadian, I miss Ottawa and Toronto in the playoffs. Yeah. See, for me as a kid growing up, uh, Montreal, Boston. Just set your watch with they're playing in the playoffs. Like for me, that was like, you know, okay, 84. Let me go in my head 84, 85. 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. Then they missed in 93. Then they did it again in 94. Okay. It's beautiful. And every now and again, you got the special one, you know, Montreal and Quebec, which just had a different kind of flavor to it, you know, and those series against the Leafs when the, when the wings first got good under Jacques, come on, that was, that was glorious. Are you kidding me? That was just absolutely good. Look at all the guys giving young blood quotes now. I love it. Is that what's going on in the chat? Because I'm yes. lost. Tea time. Yes. Ted said Diener and Derek Sutton. Yep. We could do that. Todd said, I want to play a game where we show Blake famous actors and he has to guess who they are. Would you be able to do it? No. No way. Okay. Uh, I mean, said, like, it depends on like what era we're talking. Nick said uh, in the question that we asked earlier, successful season for the Wings. I trust Steve. Hopefully the Griffins will make a deep run in the playoffs. Huge offseason for the Red Wings. Brophy with the choke signed to Jacques. Oh, for you kids out there, go look it up. Coming back from a 3-1 deficit and, you know, making the move in net. It was, it was, you know, and, and my poor buddy, Steph, I, I love him to death, but, you know, Hanlon saved their bacon in that series. And, and, you know, from a team that was so bad for so long and had a historically bad 86 season, um, my goodness gracious, to, to be in the conference finals. And listen, everybody knew they were going to lose to Edmonton. But my goodness gracious, to win two playoff series, it was, it was absolutely Phenomenal. T with Miss McGill. Good. Uh, the doc said, Blake, I'm not a movie guy either. I'm watching you. There you go. See? It'd be funny just to watch Blake watch. And then, like, all three of us would have to, like, hog tie Blake to make sure, he, like, he watches the movie. Because I would know- have to be on that day, like, where there's no sports. <laughs> We can, we can pick we can pick a random I I know we pick It'll a be like the day of the ESPYs where it, yeah it, it's, it, there's just nothing but baseball <laughs> Blake who is that I have no idea who is that Rob Lowe. 
Oh, I see it in his face now. Ah! I I only recognize Rob Lowe. Well man, are you kidding me? The generic, uh, yeah, NFL hat. On. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Red Wings uh, knock off the Habs. Four great games this year. My goodness gracious, they really did. They had four great games, back and forth games, and um, too little, too late. Unfortunately, the Washington Capitals. Uh, get into the playoffs. Uh, listen, before we get out of here, um, again, thank I have you. to tell you too before we get out of here. All right. Two things. All right. Um, so Shep and I are going to be on tomorrow at noon. And then tomorrow night, um, the Strictly Hockey Show, What the Puck, we are going to be joined by, remember Sergio Mameso? Sergio Mameso is going to be joining us. He was a Hab, a Blue, a Ranger, Maple Leafs. He's going to be joining us tomorrow. He's going to be part of the big game at Big Boy Arena, April 27th. I'm very happy to be in the broadcast booth again uh, with my buddy Ben Holden. Meltdown from the Riff is, is going to be doing his stuff as well. You know, and we talk so much about the hockey, and for good reason. It's a great game, but um, it's for great causes as well. So if you can come out and watch some hockey and enjoy some great hockey and see some stars of yesteryear, uh, we'd love to have you, and most importantly, know this that you're helping out some great causes. And uh, can't can't thank uh, the Pastor family enough for everything they do with that. All right, so what did you want to tell me, pal, before we get out of here? Well, two things. Um, I want to ask you because we are on off the air. This isn't what the puck, so mm-hmm. I can bring this up. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the Michigan stuff that came out today? I'm not. Whatever. A nice slap on the wrist. Whatever. You know, but didn't we know it was going to be that? 100%. And yeah. anyone that thought it was going to be more than that is an idiot. We we knew it was going to. Sorry. It just. It... There's Go off. Always... Come on. No, there's always, there's always like this. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, ooh, the NCAA is going to do this. And ooh, the NCAA is going to do that. And what are they going to do to Jim Harbaugh now? Mm-hmm. Like, come come on, and, you know this. This, I'm sorry. I know I said it to you in the fall when we were talking about it. I, I'm not surprised that this is the ending. I'm just not. I'm not surprised this is the ending. No, not at all. Not not at all. Okay, so the other thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, it was right when we started the show, and we were talking about like when do you start going back and watching like college football highlights and stuff. Oh, did it already happen? It happened did last it happen? night. I went down a wormhole, man. I forgot how awesome uh, Tavon Austin and LaMichael James were. LaMichael James was very underrated at Oregon. Very underrated. He was awesome. You know, I think for me, it'll be later because now you know how I am. Uh, you, what's yeah. the term? Knee deep. I'm up to my eyebrows with Stanley Cup stuff. You know, yeah. and, and now with the added bonus of the Memorial Cup being in our backyard, can't wait to get up to Saginaw for that. I, it'll probably be June for me, where where it'll be a late start for me this year. It'll definitely be a late start for me. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. Uh, Ray, ask him about the 94 playoff run. I was which born team? in 93. Which, which, which Ray, which team? Because I know what happened to my team in 94. It sucked. <laughs> At, they okay. finished... They finished. They finished the season so strongly, and, and then they had Bruins on the ropes. And Wah had that incredible game after he had his appendix taken out, and then the Bruins won the last two games. Um, David said ninety three Florida State team unreal. Jason said mock draft cast. We got to do that with Bischoff, don't we? Yeah, we, we I was like, thinking about that. Maybe uh, we get Scott on Monday. Yeah. Uh, my NHL 94 run on Sega Genesis was legendary. Best game ever. I don't care what anybody says. I'll, I will I will argue that with anybody. Oh, Ray, you're saying Mimesa with Vancouver. Oh, what a run that was. Boy, they came oh so close, didn't they? And that was a great final. Everybody talks that Ranger team, the greatest team and all that. Man, Vancouver was that close. They really were. People people forget about that. that uh, you know Real, I'm sorry, my brain's just all over the place. It's late. Dude, yeah. You, do you realize that the draft is next week? Well, it's funny you say that. I was going to bring that up. 
Why don't you bring that up naturally? I, I, I was art like seriously. Can't thank our friends at Visit Detroit enough and the Detroit Sports Commission. No, before you go, please get yourself the NFL One Pass. Please, like, like seriously, it will help you out. It will help everybody else out. And if you're looking for a place to hang out, we are going to be at uh, Batch Brewing. You know, Blake's coming later. Can't wait to get out to Batch Brewing for that. Uh, these guys have been awesome. It's a great location. You're going to be away from the hundreds of thousands of people down there. They've got a great menu, beer selection, open seven days a week. Go down for a Tiger game. Go down just because. Did I mention smoked meat? How about chicken jerk sausage? Did I did I mention those things? Make sure you visit their website, uh, www.batchbrewingcompany.com. And yes, again, next Thursday, we're all going to be hanging out there. Really looking forward to it. Um, it's so cool with the draft in our backyard. I'm going to keep saying it. I was talking to my buddy, Kurt, uh, about this, who got us together with our friends from visitdetroit.com and, and, of course, the Detroit Sports Commission. Blake, I still contend that the average human being has no idea what's coming to town. They have no flipping clue what's coming to town. Okay. Chances are, if you're watching this, you know, and I know, you know, Blake, but the average person has no, I had somebody say to me, I I'm not joking and I'm not, you would know who they are, but I don't want to. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. I had somebody say to me, so what time do you think I I should get down there? And I was like, uh, about two in the afternoon. Uh, what's so funny? Yeah. Well, what time, what time are you getting down there? I'm not. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not. I, I, I'm, I've been to the draft. I've, I've been there. I've seen the massive humanity. Think about. Hundreds of thousands of people, and I don't even want to throw numbers out there, okay? But hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people being crammed down in that area, maybe from Ford Field to Campus Marshes, because that's what's going to happen. Thank you anyway. I'm I'm a couple miles down the road at Batch, and and by golly, when we're done with our draft show. All you're going to see is elbows and buttholes as I'm running out of there going the other way, man. <laughs> Just running as fast as I can the other way. Uh, I'm excited to see all the excitement for the city <laughs> of Tyo Routed. Yes, absolutely. Uh, David said a stampede of people, fans, and more people and fans. Absolutely. Tim said, assuming it'll be bigger than the 93 NBA draft. Yes. I was there. I was. I have a funny story I can tell you too, but I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, Jason said, playoff without the Habs will still give the Bleaching family no peace from that menace that is Habs, man. It will only get worse. Pray for the Bleagians. Yeah. Remember those videos my family took during that crazy run three years ago? They took those videos. I didn't even take them. I went loony. Bat shit crazy, actually. All right. Is there anything else we got to do before we get out of here? Todd, do you have anything to say? Do you want to yell? Is well, there... I know that there's one other thing that you're supposed to do that you haven't done yet. What? Uh, there, I think you have one more read. What do I have? Broadwell. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. How could I forget about our friend Lindsay Broadwell? Lindsay, I am so sorry. Wow. I, I am just a meanie poo dum dum. Yes, you are. Hey, listen, I'm going to say the same thing. All right. I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but here it comes. Support the people who support us. If you or in the process of moving, thinking about moving, selling, both, you need to contact the right agent. There she is, Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville. The business has expanded all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business, and when it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and that everything goes smoothly when finding your new home. Buyer, seller, first-time buyer, doesn't matter. She's got your back. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed Realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. And again, please, if you guys are enjoying the stuff that we're doing, um, 
there's no other way to say it. The only reason that we're doing what we're doing is because of the people that believe in what we're doing. So if you could do me a personal favor and in turn yourself a favor, because they'll give you great service, uh, reach out to our sponsors, our partners, because I don't even want to say sponsors. They're our partners and they they become friends of ours and um, support those who support us and help yourself out at the same time. Okay. And Good. support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Yeah, you Please. could do that. Do uh, both. Ray said, I saw the map for the draft. You would have to be nuts to go see it when you can watch at home and be able to take a whiz dur during commercials. Hey, listen, point blank. If you've never been, I would recommend going. Just just know before you go. Go to visitdetroit.com, get the NFL one draft app or one pass app. I I'm telling you, like, like you won't regret it. it it'll be a madhouse, but it's something that I would suggest to everybody. Yeah, go go do it to to check that off. You know, I mean, the, that's one less thing on the bucket list. And if I, you have kids, go on Saturday. There's yeah. going to be stuff going on yeah, all around Saturday, yeah. I, so you I, don't have to be as locked in. It'll be great. I, I've been to a couple. Thanks anyway, Blake. I know I told you this. Um, gosh, you. years ago. Hold on. <laughs> no, play it again. Play it again. Do it. Do it. And I know you know that I know you. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm a lot dumber than you thought that I think that I thought I was once. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Yeah, dodgeball. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> Look at how proud he is of himself. It's so effing good. Um, no, you know what? Um, my friends get really mad at me about this. And I remember I told you this. And I don't know if you're at that point. And please tell me you remember this. I told you I will never go to another Super Bowl again. It's never happening. The only way I can envision myself going to a Super Bowl is if the Lions are there. But what if it's in Detroit? No, I don't have any interest. Okay, I like There's a legitimate question. Zero. I sorry. It's 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 a madhouse. It, yeah. But I would recommend it to you or anybody else. You know, if the if if the radio station or wherever says, "Hey, Blake, we'd like to send you go have a blast. Go go absolutely." Um, but. Like for me, been there, done that. I, I've seen one here in Detroit. I've seen two others in other places. I, I don't have any interest in going. And my buddies, my buddies get so mad at me. Like, dude, what happened to you? And it's like, I'm sorry when you go. It's just like it, it loses its magic, if that makes sense. It really does. Like, thanks anyway. It's just a big headache. Uh, Lions reveal on Thursday. I hope it's the 90s style. You and yeah, we me get old. to review that on Thursday. Oh, yeah. Don't me and you. Yeah, we're going to do that on Thursday. So, it yeah, just so pro programming schedule. Shep and I are, will be on tomorrow at noon. Sergio Mameso will join us tomorrow on What the Puck. And then, obviously, we'll take a look at, at the playoff matchups as we know it, Mike and I. Thursday. Blake and I are getting together, and then Friday, Shep and I are doing another show. So, yeah. A lot Saturday, you are moving. Yes. Well, Saturday's one of those days, dude. I'm not even going to tell you. It's Saturday's just like from 9 o'clock until 5 o'clock. I have a lot of things to do in that time frame. And then, and then after all that, I have to drive up to East Lansing, and we're beating the rush by a couple days. I already brought back one box already which was really cool. I have to give my daughter credit. I went up and visited her last weekend and she had like a big box waiting for me. And I was like, yes, the less that I have to do on move out day. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. uh, Todd said, what dorm? Are you kidding me? You think I want these freaks? Know what dorm my daughter's staying in? Nope. No way. She's an abbot. I'd, I would end the stream if you said it. <laughs> I just did. I just, oh, well, and the uh, stream. Ben Ben said Saturday. Sean brings the family to Big Boy Arena. Ben, I, if I can go, it's Sunday. I know it's 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 to be determined, but uh, if you don't have to go up to Michigan State to move things for your daughter, uh, I would recommend going to Big Boy Arena to see mm -hmm. the Rockers in the playoffs. If there is the game three, which is necessary, that is Sunday. And Blake, I don't know if you have anything going on Sunday, but I would cordially invite you myself 
you, me, Mike, and Todd, if you want to go, maybe we should all go out there on Sunday if there is a game three. No disrespect. I hope there isn't. I hope the Rockers took care of the series already, damn it. And then we'll just go to the next series. Yeah. See how that works? Ray, Ray said, listening to you all these years, I never knew you had a daughter. All we ever heard about was your son. You never knew that? Crack baby? Yeah. I, everybody everybody refers to my daughter as crack baby because I called her crack baby on the air. And now the poor girl, she turns 19 and she has all these messages from people on her 19th birthday, like on Facebook saying, happy birthday, crack baby. <laughs> what does she do in life to deserve that? Right? She gets me for her father. So, oh, uh, yeah, that's so bad. I, I think I'm all right. All right. Yeah, you're a pretty more? great guy. All right. So, hey, that's nice. See, thing. I'm being nice tonight. You're, you were mean. I was nice. This How is dare. backwards. How dare you? Everything's backwards. You hate it? Dylan Larkin. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I don't know what your problem with Larkin is. Nothing. I have no problem with Larkin. I've heard that. 2,000 times in the last three years. I have no problem with Dylan Larkin. None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Don't ask me to call him something he isn't. He's a good player. <sighs> All right. Anything else? No. That's it. All right. Listen, have yourselves a wonderful night. I hope we could all talk this out and at least feel a little bit better. You know what sucks? The laying in bed part. I hate the laying in bed part. Because you kind of get your mind off it. Maybe you go binge eat. Maybe you turn on another game. Maybe you crack open the bottle of CC. But then when you lay down in bed, you start thinking about it again and get pissed off. I hope you didn't get too pissed off tonight. All right. Is that cool? That description just sounded like regret sex. I didn't like that. I'm at- the walk of shame. The walk of <laughs> shame. Off the Air with Sean Belegian, featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to off the air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.